Hey guys, what's up? This is Art. Hopefully you guys are having a good day. Uh, the last couple days has been not bad. Um, you know, things just, you know, things that, you know, work's been going good. Life is going great. So here's the problem. When things like, when things are going great in your life, why do you, why do sometimes you have these you have some kind of negative thoughts. Okay. So I did something which I said I was never so to give you a background of what I'm talking about. Years ago I swore off of dating women. I swore off dating women. No more dating. No more try to date. No more of that. <laughs> now, the reason why, well, partly I have bad luck. For one reason, I have bad luck. I, what you, what some people call, I attract the wrong women. I like some, like a lot of people say, oh, are you just attract the wrong ones. So I'm like, but if I'm attracting the wrong ones, you know, where's the right ones at? You know, well, the right one will be alone. I'm like, okay. They told me that when I was 20. They told me that when in the teens, when I was in the teens. They told me that in the 20s. They told me that when I was in the 30s. They told me that when I was uh, I'm in the 40s. I'm 50 something now. Not, I'm like 51 now. So right now I'm like, okay, if there is a so-called good woman, I don't know where she is. But anyway. So what happened was, I just, years ago, I told myself I swore off dating. No more dating. Okay? I swore myself off to that. Because I don't want the hassle. No. I just don't want the hassle. <laughs> and I'm just going to enjoy using my energies to do what I want to do and to please myself. That was my goal. Okay? Now, coming through this year. This year, I met a woman. Okay? And for the first time in a long time, I let, I threw my I threw my goals aside and said, okay, let me try to date this woman. She seemed pretty interesting. <laughs> she seemed very interesting. She's very attractive to me. To me, she's very attractive. So maybe to, but you know, to other people she might not be, but to me she is. Sure. She had the body kind of body I like. Okay. So here's the question. Okay. Well, yeah, she just she's a single mother. Okay, fine, nothing wrong with that. And you know why? Because at these times, these days, see, back in the seventies, you could probably find a woman with no kids very quick, easily. <laughs> but these days, just about eighty, just it seems like eighty percent of every woman that I came across was a single parent. <laughs> the ones that wasn't married. Or it didn't have kids, they were kind of crazy. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't explain that, okay? Let's just say I have bad luck. Alright, so what happened was we go out to dinner a couple times, you know, she brings the baby along. I have no problems with that. Okay, after getting to learn, after, you know, chatting with her for a little, and we chatted for a good, like, three to four months now, okay? Three to four months. I found out, okay, she's vegan. Now, hear me out. I know people say vegans are crazy. Okay, I know. She knows I eat meat. She don't care if I eat meat. Okay. She's not trying to... She kind of wanted me to try veganism by making little suggestions here and there, but... 
I'm a meat eater. I love my meat. I love my steak. I love my beef. I love my chicken. I love my fish. I love my eggs sometimes. Okay? I love that stuff. I love my milk. Sometimes I like ice cream. <laughs> You know, and the funny thing is, is that whenever I take her out, there's really not many places I can take her out. So like, where, so certain restaurants I like, okay, like for example, Buffalo Wild Wings, I go to take her to Buffalo Wild Wings, she get the Wild Wild Wings, okay, fine. Well, I get my real, what I get my real wings. I took her out to this other restaurant and the only thing she could get was a salad. One day she's like, hey, there's a, there's a vegan restaurant in Detroit we could try. And I was sitting right here. I looked at those prices and I'm like, good Lord, that's expensive as all hey. That's expensive. Holy moly. I mean, true, going to Buffalo Wild Wings was like a good 30 to 40 bucks. Yeah, it was. Going to Applebee's, we went to Applebee's a couple times. That was a good 30, 40 bucks. You know. But the fun thing, but the problem was during all this whole courtship, she'll hug me. But she but it's not like an abrasive hug. It's like, hey, I'm just hugging you. It felt like friends. And then when I start pulling away, she's like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I'm like, uh, it didn't feel warm. It just felt like, eh, okay. And I'm like, you know, this, something's not right here. <laughs> you know, the thing is that, you know, I got in some more info. It took me a while to get some information that you kind of need. You know, you have, you're a newborn. You have a newborn baby, okay? Like eight months. Okay, you live in a one-bedroom apartment. Okay, where's the where's the father? You know, you look at where's the father. Well, the father don't want anything to do with the kid. <laughs> Obviously, okay. Why does the father not want to do anything with the kid? Hmm, interesting. You know, and so you start trying to do some. You try to do some digging. You know what I'm saying? You try to do your due diligence. You try to do your due diligence. You try to think. What's going on? All right. You know, a lot of times we flirt with each other. We flirt. And then all of a sudden she's like, you know, one time she's like, hey, you know, I was flirting around with her one time. And then she's like, hey, you know, wouldn't it be kind of cool if we, you, you take me to the mall and buy me some stuff? And I'm like, no. But it'd be kind of, but you know, it'd be kind of cool to walk around in the mall, but not buy you anything. As soon as I said that, she was like, "Huh, I don't like the way how you objectify me." I'm like, "What? Objectify? What are you talking about? I don't like being objectified." I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, what the?" I was like, "What the flipping map? What the flipping burgers is this?" <laughs> okay, so you know what? So I was like, okay, was this something going on here? Then she turns, so then, I st then she started blowing my phone up, you know, with these rapid texts about how, you know, blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that, blah, blah, this. And I'm sitting right here, I was like, okay. All right. I'm thinking, oh, during this time, you try to kiss, you try to give her a kiss and she pulls away. And I'm sitting right here, what the hell is going on here? What's going on? We're by and everything seems great. She claims, she says she has a great time with me. Okay. So why is it that things are not progressing? Okay, you can turn any time, you know. That's okay. True story this morning. I'm at a stoplight. And it's a no. There's a sign that says no turn on red, and it's red for me. And the guy behind me was trying to honk his horn, really complaining that I should be turning. I'm like, you know, I put put my hand out the window and I pointed to the no turn on red sign. And he keeps honking more. I'm like, 
So I look like a, I'm like, no, nah, I ain't not. I'm not getting a ticket for you. But anyway, back to the story. So, I mean, and this is going on for about. I'm like, okay, what the? Heck? I'm like, what's going on? Oh, you know, we could, you know, and she comes up with these ideas of what to do. Let's go take a walk in a park. Let's go to this fair. Let's go to this. I'm like, uh. after all, I was like, wait, why is it that I'm, you wanted to me to take you to all these places? But I feel kind of don't feel like the, there's nothing going on between us. <laughs> but everything seems normal. Everything seems like it's normal. Everything seems like it's going strong. But it's you try to put you put your pull away all the time. So I'm like, okay, fine. So I said, you know what? I'll do the same thing. So I, you know, I poke her brains a little bit. I'll say some things. I'll see how far I can push the envelope to try to get a reaction out of her. Sometimes she's resistant. Then sometimes she says, I don't like the way how you're abusive to me. I'm like, abusive? What the hell are you talking about? And I was like, what are you doing? What are you talking about? I'm abusive. Really? Am I smacking you around? Am I doing am I, am I doing stuff for you? Am I doing stuff to you? No. But I'm abusive? Really? Then I start then certain things started happening. Then certain things I started thinking. Hmm. One day I went, we was at the store and she was sitting in the car and she and she called her ex-boyfriend. I'm like, okay, she, why she's calling her ex-boyfriend? And she starts bawling. Because the ex-boyfriend don't want anything to do with her. I get the story that they her and the ex-boyfriend broke up. One day she went to a bar, met some dude, and in and ipso facto, she has a baby. So I'm like, huh. Okay. But she keeps saying that she's blessed. Okay. So I'm like, are you being blessed with child support? And then so what happened was she was like, she was crying. He goes, he don't want to be friends with me. I said, of course not. Because he thought that was his kid. But when he realized it wasn't his kid, he's like, you're, you're, you're nothing to him. Then she was like, then she started getting kind of mad and angry and started calling me out. And I was like, okay, fine. I'm like, okay. How dare you talk to me like that? Blah, blah, blah. And how dare you? I'm like, okay, it's time to take you home. I said, okay, it's time to take you home. I couldn't kick her out of my car because I was, she was in my car and I was driving. Plus, you know, she has a baby. You know, it's not, I mean, it's not right for you to kick this woman out with her baby with her. You know, that makes you lower than dirty if you do that. It teaches her a lesson, but it's, you know, it's the baby. She didn't, the baby didn't ask for that. So, then she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I just, I'm like, whoa, like, wait, 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 hold on a second. Why is it that you're always sorry for saying stuff when well, you shouldn't be saying stuff in the first place? <laughs> now, I'll tell you the truth, and I say, you know what? Here's the thing. I worked 10 hours today. I dealt with a lot of BS at my job, which I do. And the funny thing is, I still didn't take it out on you, Okay. But you want to do this? I'm like, and something tells me, you know what, Art? I think this is something you should pass on. I think this is something you should pass on. Because this is not going to work out for you. <laughs> so then she tell, then you know, a couple of days later, she said, uh, I'm starting therapy again. I'm like, starting therapy again? Maybe you should never have stopped. <laughs> you know? And blah, 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 and everything seemed cool again. I'm like, okay. But I'm like, okay, I'll hang out with you, but I'm keeping my eye open. I'm keeping my eye open. Why? Because I'm not going to tolerate, I'm not going to tolerate this kind of behavior where you want to say whatever you, whatever you want to me, but then turn around and say you're sorry. I'm like, okay. If I did that, I'll be the... See, the fun thing is women can, in my opinion, women can do that and that's a, and they can get a pass. But if a guy does that, he's lower than dirt. You know, he's lower than dirt.
he's lower than dirt, you know, and I'm like, come on, man, this is ridiculous. So, I looked up, one day she asked me to take her to some kind of, she wanted to go to some weird feast kind of food pantry kind of event. And I'm like, okay. Uh, okay, I said, I'll take you there, but I'm not staying there. <laughs> well, can you, like, take, drop you off and pick me up? I'm like, okay, I can do that. It's on a weekend. I, now, this happened a couple, this happened about three weeks ago. <laughs> that weekend, I had an ear infection, a small ear infection, or it seemed like an ear infection. So I had these eardrops in my ear, and the pain was just unbearable. So here I am driving to her house with this ear pain, and it's like 87 degrees. <laughs> so I get there. She's not ready because she has to change her da daughter's diaper. I'm like, okay. <laughs> now, what happened, it was a nice day out. It was like 87 degrees. It was a nice day, too. So I had the windows down. I had the windows down, let them go. breathing in the nice, cool air, you know. Well, not cool air, but nice fresh air, you know what I mean? She comes out with the baby and some trash. And I'm like, okay. So, I, you know, I said, okay, I'll take it to the dumpster for you. So I'm walking to the dumpster, and she's like, can I turn the air conditioner on? And I go, no. And she was like, uh, well, well, it's hot outside, you know, and it's hot, and my baby might faint. I'm like, the baby might faint. The baby might faint. Okay. Considering the fact that you're taking the baby out in the hot weather anyway, okay, that you don't need to take her. Okay, fine. So I told her, I said, I'll do it when I get back. So I'm walking back to the dumpster. I hear my car door slam. I'm like, whoa, did this girl just slam my car door? And then all of a sudden I turn around, her door slams. I'm like, oh, no, 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 uh -uh. no, no, mm -mm. no, you're not going to do that. So she, so I get to my, back to my car. It's a hundred feet to the dumpster. Okay. I get to my car, put some, um, what you call it, hand sanitizer on to clean my hands because I'm touching a dirty ass dumpster. And I read her text. She goes, I'm not coming out, I'm not coming out until there's air conditioner in the car. I asked you and you said no, and you gave me the weird look. I don't respect that. So I'm like, you know what? Art's gonna go home. So I started my car up. I drove home. She's calling me. And I'm not answering. I'm not answering the phone call when I'm driving on the freeway. Okay? I'm not answering the phone. The reason why? Because I don't want to argue with this woman. My ear hurts. I'm in pain and I don't want to argue with this girl. So then when I get home, I read the text and she, how rude and I uh, this and I was looking forward to this and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, hold on a second. What you did to me was disrespectful. You said I did something. I did not do a dang thing. You rolled your eyes at me. Okay. He gave me this weird look. Okay. And I'm not, I said, I went home because I'm not going to argue with you. Because what you did makes me want to argue. And I don't want to argue. And she goes, huh, I don't like being disrespected. And I'm sick and tired of your abusive behavior. And I was like, abusive behavior? You don't even appreciate the, you don't even appreciate me. I said, you don't even appreciate me. You know, I'm trying to date you and stuff like that. And she goes, well, I only wanted you to be friends anyway. I'm like, oh, oh, so you wanted to be friends. 
And when was going to drop that? I thought you understood. I'm like, uh, no. No, I don't understand sign signals and stuff like that. I understand words. I'm not into reading signals. <laughs> okay? I'm not into reading signals. And we're in a traffic jam. Interesting. But anyways. But anyway. So let me finish off the story. So, and she goes, you know, she basically goes off about this and this and this and this. I'm like, okay, whatever. I started reading some comic books because, you know, the, my phone's blowing up. And then so I finally get a chance to read. She goes, I want you to write an apology letter to my daughter. I'm like, your daughter's like eight years, eight months old. What does she know? What does she know? Because I'm sick and tired of being disrespected. I know you're not going to write a letter. I know you're gonna write, not going to write a letter, but you're going to write a, in order for me to talk to you again, you're going to write a letter about, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, uh, and you know, I don't want your abuse. I said, why don't you apologize for your bratty behavior? Ah, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Fine. I'm going to do this block. And she broke down block. And so she supposedly blocked me. Okay. What did you think I did? Went back home, reading back my comic books. I was like, okay, read my comic books. I don't care. <laughs> And this is the reason why a lot of people wanted to tell me that I need a woman. It's funny, my friends tell me I need a woman. I'm like, really? You think I need that? Did I need that? No, I didn't. <laughs> but anyway. So, what happened was, I told all my friends that have kids about this. And guess what? they chose my side after they chose my side I let them read the text messages and they solidified that I was like okay cool all right cool then I talked to another friend and he's very empathetic towards women very empathetic towards women and he was like well are you kind of being insensitive and it was being insensitive because you know it's the baby and all this other stuff. I said, dude, she took a walk. She took a walk with the baby in 80 degree weather. She did? Really? And she talking about this? The windows was down? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. You're in the right, bro. I'm like, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> so, so what I did. You know, tell you the truth, I didn't, I don't, I think is I have some of her stuff in my trunk and I don't want it anymore. I could toss it, but I'm like, nah, I you know what? I'm going to be a good guy and I'm going to give her her stuff. So what I did was one day before I went to work, what I did is I dumped her stuff on the front door, on the front porch or wherever, front, where for, uh, where she lives. And there, in there, there's a note. There's a, there's a letter. 